That's right. It's Wednesday. Now it's hump day. It's hump day Wednesday. Today, it's normal world. My name is Quarter Black Garrett, and joining me today is Angela. Hi. <laughs> Daddy's away. Oh, that's right. <laughs> and we can play. Yes. And I brought a good friend of mine that it's the first time I we're meeting in person. Vanessa, the streamer, the provocateur, <laughs> controversial woman, gothics, Vanessa. Ow. Thank you for coming in. Hello. Hello. So happy to be here. Thank you. Nice to finally meet you in the flesh. I know. I feel like we've been friends for a while, but just, you know, never yeah. hung out. Uh, am I to your expectations? Pretty much, yeah. Okay, cool. I was You're expecting not. you to, I'm like, scream at me. That's what it was. <laughs> uh, well, I get that a lot. Mm. You're just not as violent as I thought you were. Yeah. Mm. Not as problematic, you know. Yeah. I'm just normal. It's weird. Yeah. Why would you be that? Um, do you know what year it is? Uh, I, I mean, that I don't know. <laughs> the internet needs constant yeah. reactions. It, it's it's too much. much. Yeah. It's too much. <laughs> they demand it. Yeah. They demand the reactions. Uh, hey, look, let's just get into it. Uh, actually, wait. I forgot about this. This guy named Dave Lendu. Do you know who that is? I believe it's Lando. 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 Dave Landau, you can see him June 14th and 15th at Summit City Comedy Club in Fort Wayne, Indiana, and a bunch of other shows. Go check it out, DaveLandau.com. And uh, he was doing a lot of fun stuff this week. Yeah, He's I'm very doing, uh, what, what, what's the, he did He's, Tyler Fisher and Friends. Mm -hmm. Tyler Fisher, I need, we need to get him on the show because yeah, I love absolutely. that guy. And uh, RFK Jr. RFK Jr. and Friends with like Rob Schneider, yeah. Russell Brand, a bunch of people. So yeah. good for Dave. I Freaking hope he brings back nice. some. Bring some one of those goodies. people over here. Sure. You know, come <laughs> over here. Uh, like and subscribe. We, I see you got two tone in the comments. I see you every single episode. Appreciate you, bro. Uh, let's get into the news. Joe Biden. The very cognitive, not impaired man, yeah. president. Very with it, that guy. Mm. Very on top of it. Cool with the kids. He uh, <laughs> finally responded to Trump's threats of debate. He was like, debate me, dude. Anywhere, I'll do it. And he hasn't said anything. But now, he dropped a wrestling promo. And I think we should all watch it. It's very well put together and doesn't have uh, 500 cuts. Please. Donald Trump lost two debates to me in 2020. And since then, he hadn't shown up for debate. Now he's acting like he wants to debate me again. Well, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. So let's pick the dates, Donald. I hear you're free on Wednesday. Free on Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> but didn't Biden kind of start this when he went on uh, Stern and was like, oh, yeah, I'll debate him, I'll debate him. He did say that, but I think before that, Trump was like, he, he already started. But he's only it. good for two. <laughs> so don't push it back to you. <laughs> he's like, I got two in me. That's it. That's all the cocaine they can afford. I just don't know how he's saying he beat Trump in a debate. Like, were we watching the same debate? <laughs> Was it a different channel? I'm so confused. I'm so excited to watch this. I, I, right now, I am so anti, like, political stuff and the whole election thing. It's very yes, tiring. I'm and all so, that stuff. I'm over it. Uh, but this, I am there for. Yeah, yeah. We would have to live I'm getting stream popcorn. Great t-shirts. Yeah. I'm yep. so down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You think Biden's going to make a bunch of extra, like t-shirts like at the Super Bowl? I think so. And then he loses and he's so. going to like give them to Nigerian yeah. kids or something. <laughs> yeah, that'd be, yeah, that's very specific. Um, so it's, they're not going to have an audience. Is that what they're saying? Wait, for real? Yeah. Uh, supposedly uh, some dude on CNN saying that, yeah, they'll agree to a debate but no audience in a studio so they can do some more jump cuts. Mm, ah, uh. ah. So why don't they just go on Joe Rogan? They, that's where they should do it. Yeah. I think that's the best venue is like a, a venue that most people can watch. It's easy to get to. Everyone knows the Joe Rogan experience and it's not a big political on stage with the moderator. It's just like two guys talking yeah. about their ideas and one just drooling. Okay. <laughs> that's gonna be oh, by the way, Speaking of, Trump got back to Biden oh, about it. Yeah, yeah, he tweeted. So what did he say? Tweet. What did he say? Because I can't read that. Crooked oh Joe Biden God. is the worst debater I have ever faced. He can't put two sentences together. Crooked is also the worst president in the history of the United States by far. It's time for a debate so that he can explain to the American people his highly destructive open border policy, new and ridiculous EV <laughs> mandates, the allowance of crushing inflation, high taxes, and his really weak foreign policy, uh, policy, which is allowing the world to catch on fire. I'm ready and willing to debate Crooked Joe 
at the two proposed times in June and September, I would strongly recommend more than two debates and for excitement purposes, a very large venue. Although Biden is supposedly afraid of crowds. That's only because he doesn't get them. Just mm. tell me when I'll oh. be there. Let's get ready to rumble. <laughs> to be fair, it's because of social distancing. Oh, uh, they're, yeah, they're still doing that. They're still covering. I feel like he just hit the mic on his phone and just spoke all of that <laughs> Probably out. Probably did. Think about yeah. it, just saying it. I could. Yeah. Oh. Crooked. Job. He's crooked. He doesn't know how to speak. You could see it. They cut all the things out. All the ums. Every time he fell asleep, cut out. Cut so out. June, June and September, they June. both agree, uh, seemingly agreed June to June twenty seventh. We're doing it. We're watching yeah, that June show. June twenty seventh. I'm so stoked. <laughs> for I'm that. ready. Uh, also, do you guys know about the, 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 these college kids? They're like really angry about stuff. Um, I feel like that's sort of a requirement if you go to college. <laughs> I mean, I never went. Prerequisite. Yeah, yeah. To graduating, yeah. you're really mad about a lot of things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, specifically mad about uh, Palestine. Mm, yeah. Middle East. Yeah, something the they have no there. knowledge of. Yeah, and anytime you ask them, they have no idea what's going on. Mm -hmm. Very confused about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, well, this one decided when she was getting her diploma that she would uh, make a fuss. <laughs> Joy Lynn Van Hassel. Van Hassel. Big Sia Chen. Ida Kamra. So these are the other people that followed after her. It, cre it created a so, long So the first girl, this is like very performative. The first girl tied she herself, zip -ties. like zip tied with, with like a cuff and then ripped, ripped her, her diploma. diploma. McTeer. Oh, yeah. What was the name of that first girl? Like Tarsis Salome. Mm. So what better way of <laughs> articulating that your diploma means absolutely nothing? <laughs> <laughs> that name i don't know my dad spent a lot of money mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> also taxpayers right also i, I don't yeah. think palestine or anywhere cares no. about your don't care. you, you just did it to yourself you, you solved yourself. nothing at all and the, these these are the same people who would talk about privilege it's like ma'am you have the privilege <laughs> to go to a university and tear up your diploma that you've probably gotten into a lot of student debt for and expecting yeah. people to pay for it and you're tearing up your that's privilege you dumb dumb that's sad <laughs> well said <laughs> again don't go to college it's a very no. silly place no. silly place uh hey toxic gaming this is something you know about mm, yes uh, you came from the field the streamer field uh got a little canceled yep because you had an opinion yeah how dare i the audacity why did you get canceled <laughs> You know, if I, you mind talking about it, I, I, I went on Twitter. Uh, this was did around a documentary about it. Yes. By the way, yes, she did a documentary. It's released. You can go watch it. You can go watch it on lore.tv, but we're trying to get it on Amazon Prime. They still haven't approved us yet, so we'll see. Right. Um, but pretty much, uh, I got canceled because Disney was announcing a live action Little Mermaid movie. Right. And they casted a black actress. And mm -hmm. I'm like, what is this? And what I didn't like was going on social media and seeing people say, oh, you're racist if you have a problem with this casting. <laughs> and me just trying to be reasonable, like that's not a good enough reason to call someone racist, mm -hmm. you know, because I like the white Ariel and I know I'm not racist. Mm. And they thought that that was totally unacceptable. Mm. And it's all and then downhill from there. there. And then I ended up here somehow. <laughs> Well, you've learned your lesson. <laughs> well, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, it's not the best. Uh, but yes, yeah, so uh, this streamer, please, we just let's play the play the clip because it it kind of speaks for itself. She. But yeah, but yeah, but you are literally just fucking all talk, bro. Oh, be honest with me. One down. My ult's ready. Do you know what rape feels like? No, I don't actually. Well, do you want to know? Are you saying you're going to rape me? Because you're heading on the right path right now. Are you saying you're going to rape me? You're going on the right path right Is that what you're saying? Going up. It's not rape if I like it. Is it now? Hectic no goal. This is why I hate the streaming community. 
and I <laughs> was born in the streaming community. It's where you came from. It's where I came from. And it is, and I can understand because I've had my moments back before I took the red pill where I tried to pull the victimhood card and get mad mm. at people because they were being racist. And I was very fragile. And th there's a bigger story with this particular chick, okay? Because right. I, I, I watched the video and it was already very annoying because mm -hmm. it was obvious where she knew where it was going. And she just wanted to get him to say it. Mm -hmm. She was goading him into that trap. And then he said it. And, uh, oh, oh, yeah. oh my God, right, I got to turn right. the stream off. I can't deal. Right. It's all, it's all. So uh, what happened before then is she, there's literally a clip circulating of her saying, I'm going to unmute him for content. So she acknowledges she's trying uh. to bait him into saying it. And then she ends the stream all just like, ah. uh -huh. and, and what gets me about it is even if she didn't do that, you have the power to do something about it. It's called the mute button. Oh, yeah. It's in every like online game. You can block yeah. that person. It's all already in the game. And it's not that I'm condoning what the guy said, but right. I recognize human nature and people are jerks. And yeah. you're going to encounter th nasty things online or in person. And if you have the opportunity to block that out of your life, then you should do it instead of crying about it. Because it's not going to change what people say. Or specifically goading him into saying... right. These things. Right. Like, where did you think this was going to go? Right. Exactly. Going straight to content. That's where it's going. Right. So how did it, how did it get out? Was she the one that put, posted this clip? <laughs> so it's like, this yeah. clip is bad enough. Like if she wanted it to be really viral, she could have like cut out the whole lead in. Right. She was asking him, trying to get him to say it. Just cut right to him saying, oh yeah, I'm going to rape you. And then. Right. And you could react. Well, she uploaded that that clip that you saw that went viral has like over Jeez. a million views. But with Twitch, you know, you get the whole VOD on there so you can right. go in after the fact and make clips. So that's why other people have that extra context that she didn't include in the video. Is this is this like super prevalent in the streaming community because that's what i don't i don't interact on twitch i don't yeah. stream to twitch i stream to youtube Good for you <laughs> uh just because like i don't like anything that's going on there yeah you know, when i saw that they had moderators that were pretending to be deers mm. i was like not a place for well me. you're deer phobic for saying that i am very deer phobic mm -hmm. yeah. yeah i mean it is it is prevalent in the sense that people are always trying to pull the victimhood card, mm -hmm. not necessarily baiting people into saying things, but there are people that complain about bigotry in the gaming spaces and calling it toxic instead of just hitting the mute button and growing thick skin. Because what annoys me is that these gamers who complain about mean things people say on audio, it's like you guys are paving the way for more censorship by not growing a spine. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's escalated because... California, the state of California has filed a massive lawsuit in July against gaming Activision, a uh, gaming giant Activision, uh, the parent company of Blizzard, online games, make a ton of uh, online games. The suit spearheaded by the Department of Fair Employment and Housing. I don't know how that tracks with video games. Fair, empo fair employment and housing. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, <laughs> I didn't. Concluded a two-year investigation into Blizzard and Activision's workplace culture. So that maybe that's the employment part mm. kind of comes in. Uh, stating that there was misogyny and gender-based, uh, a biased discrimination. And rape culture. And rape culture, which... <laughs> I mean, I've heard some things. Real. I've heard some stuff about <laughs> what, what Blizzard. What have you heard? heard I gotta know. Um, I, I'm, I'm like a outsider to this, so I so, like need the... So Blizzard, the it, it came out a few years ago, probably two years ago, uh, that r there was uh, parties. They'd have all these, uh, like, they would have a, a Blizzard party, and then there would be a sex... After party? Room. Oh. So they, like they would go to a con, <laughs> you know, one of these Blizz, Blizz cons, yeah. stuff like that. And they would have, you know, they're always in these big hotels and there would be a, a room that you'd go and have an orgy in. Okay. These are things that I've heard. Because that's normal. What's, I mean, <laughs> it's very normal. But it's not illegal. Uh, technically, I guess, yeah. It's but there's rapey, like a, there's a, you know, the power dynamics between bosses and under uh, underlings, Unders. <laughs> you know, the lessers, yeah. as I would call them. Yeah. Uh, so there's a lot of weird stuff. Is there any other stories that you remember from that? Because that's the one that kind of sticks out in my mind. No, that was really the only one. The, like the rape culture thing is the one that stuck out. Yeah. And even so, that's just basing it off of what I've heard. And I'm very skeptical to jump on these bandwagons without mm -hmm. getting the full story. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Uh, and I also doubt California government. <laughs> so I don't know if they got the right conclusions, but yeah. I just don't like Blizzard and Activision in general. Yeah. Because they're kind of trash companies. Them, Sony, all the big wigs, they all suck. Mm. Um, but uh, yeah, it's just it, they they've keep, they keep trying to make gamers out to be that. Uh, what, what the streamer was trying to do. It's like, oh, these male gamers, they're always yelling at us because we're women and all that. It's like they're they're always going to be trash talking that's just what video games is yeah that's how it is there's a there's a asshole in every single form of entertainment you're going to find them everywhere you just got to deal with those those people mm-hmm. and kind of move on and they kind of paint the whole industry that way yeah it's, you can tell these people yeah. never grew up in call of duty lobbies oh, no. it was a different time dude that was like d day for us <laughs> you know a lot of in bombs dropped like every single time. Popping about talking about my mama all the time. Mm-mm. Oh god. You just gotta get over Mm-mm. it. That's sad. Gotta get a thick skin. <laughs> yeah. You gotta get armor plus two. <laughs> uh hey, do you know <laughs> our, our favorite our think? favorite mayor, Eric Adams, New York City mayor, okay. Eric Adams. He's very uh he's you know, he should run for president. I think he's very articulate and has a lot of good things to say. And he recently was talking about the migrant crisis and he, he has some issues going on in New York city with a shortage of lifeguards. So put these two things together. Here's the clip. Here's the clip. That states those jobs that we are in high demand, we could expedite. How do we have a large body of people that are in our city and country that are excellent swimmers? Just stop, stop right there. Stop right and there. At stop the right there. At the same time, we need like. Oh my God. <laughs> Eric, bro. Do you. Do Diddy's you... up there. <laughs> He's creeping <laughs> on your shoulder. <laughs> why, why, is, why is Diddy up here? Why does he look so skinny, too? Is that Diddy? Wait, go, wait hold up. Go back. Yo, why does he look so emaciated? He's under a lot of stress. That's true. That's the Ozempic. Dude, read the room. Do, like, don't do, swimming across the border. Do you think it's the best way to, <laughs> to describe them? See, I've, right. I actually interpreted that clip wrong. Now that I know it's about migrants, because I thought New York, predominantly okay. black, black people can't swim. Oh, that's, that's where I, I was going. That's a whole nother angle it could yeah. be. Yeah. It could be either way. That way. It's hilarious either way. <laughs> I thought he was trying to make a statement about a poorly made statement about how there's all these jobs that we need filled. Right. But we aren't letting people fill them because of the red tape and stuff that they have to do to get into the country, et cetera, et cetera. Mm. Which, no, but, I, but you, cho- you chose so poorly. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, we got all these Mexicans here. That we know they can swim. So like, why we don't we just yards. put them over? Come on. Like it's like saying that. Yeah, it's crazy. And then that a lot, like along with them saying that like black people don't know how to use the internet. Mm. These inner city kids, they don't even know what the word computer is. Yeah, it's true. Democrats, bro. <laughs> Wild. I don't know how to handle these people anymore. Vanessa, hey, how you been doing? I've been doing good. How you know, doing? I feel like it's a long time since we like talked. Yeah. You know? Yeah. A lot it's of good. things have happened in your life since then. A lot of things. Yeah. Like. When did you, when you, you became a Christian pretty recently, right? Mm, two years. Two years? Two How's years. that been going? It's been great. I know it's like, it's either you get a lot of people that overjudge you mm-hmm. or uh, people that like overpraise you. Yeah. Well, I get, I get different reactions from all sides. And I think the political awakening definitely helped prepare me for the response to me becoming a Christian Mm -hmm. because the political awakening, the response was, oh, you're crazy. You're grifting. And now the Christian is, oh, you're grifting. You went off the deep end. You know, Uh, you're just stupid. (laughs) So, so it's like, uh, same people though. It's It's the same type of people. It's kind of the same types of people. And this is why I tell, I tell my audience like, okay, it's nice that you enjoy my content, but I don't want you to put your faith in a political party because a lot of the flack that I get are from people on the right. Mm -hmm. And these are like the non-religious folks that don't see the correlation between faith and politics. And and I believe that all laws stem from trying to legislate someone's morality. 
And even if you're an atheist, that's just yeah. the reality. And a lot of people don't see that correlation and they just think that I'm just, you know, Bible thumping just for the hell of it. And I'm like, ah. You can't relate to somebody being passionate about yeah. God. Right. And I was never passionate about God. Mm -hmm. I was very anti-Christianity specifically. Um, so for me to have this crazy transformation, I think from a critical thinking standpoint, I would like for people to consider why that is instead yeah. of just like, ooh, let me make some Christian dollars. Yeah, it's like the the OnlyFans girl. I, I still don't know what's going on with that. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Uh, what Nala was name? Yes. Yeah. Um, she came on the Whatever podcast and was saying her body count was so huge and all this stuff. And it was very outlandish. And then she was baptized and became a Christian, you know supposedly right allegedly i don't know her heart but uh everyone either destroyed her or was over praising her mm -hmm. and not just letting her go through the process of what becoming a christian is it's like i don't think we should be putting new christians up to this like mm -hmm. mantle and going oh my gosh like they're they're now a christian and, like we've seen this happen with like kanye yeah yeah <laughs> you know <laughs> yeah like, yeah you know it, it's you don't know what's in their heart, so you don't know what is going on in their life. Yeah. But at the same time, if it seems like she's trying to make a change, why are we trashing her for that? Right. Yeah. You know, it's like you're pushing her and other people that see you trash her away. Absolutely. When you do that. Absolutely. And and that's criticism for the Christians and the non-Christians. Because mm -hmm. a lot of Christians were just like, oh, yeah. you know, she's faking it. It's like, okay, well, give her time, pray for her. It's a process. Transformation doesn't happen overnight. And, you know, I would be more worried, like you said, about like, what, what are you expressing to other people watching this dialogue? Uh, you know, yeah. what does it say about us not being uh, forgiven, uh, forgiving people and you know, giving people the benefit of the doubt that you can change instead of just looking for a reason to be bitter and angry, which I think is what the majority of people want. They just want to be angry about something. Yeah, that's just that's very the Internet culture is like, I want to be mad at something. Yeah. So I can make a video on it. Yes. It's like, oh, you exhaust me. Yeah, it's, it is, it's very sad. Um, but like uh, along with that is maybe she is a Christian. Maybe she is trying to make these changes. But these things take time. Yeah. Like I, I think uh, an argument that somebody had against her being like grifting, which she, I still don't know. I haven't gotten an update on what her life is. But uh, she still had an OnlyFans account after she was baptized and after she announced that she was a Christian and after she was on the Daily Wire and all this stuff. But then somebody said that there's a process of like closing down your your account. You can't just close it out of nowhere because people are paying for it. So you have to like he should have to get it out, get out of that in a legal way. Yeah. So I'm like, guys, it's just like, don't jump on all this stuff so fast. Right. To, to say that so she much is more or not. Damage than exactly. Good. Like it just don't. Maybe she started off grifting and then she could have like, sure. Came around to it later. Or maybe she's not, not grifting at all, but now she's grifting because people are jumping on the bandwagon all of a sudden. So it's mm -hmm. just like, there's a lot of that. Yeah. Energy. And I think as far as if we want to talk about grifting and making money, you can keep doing the OnlyFans. This woman is a millionaire. Yes. <laughs> why? Like why she doesn't need money. Right. I think you'd make a lot less money yeah, by she, closing down an OnlyFans. Right. And she's made the money and she still sees that her life is missing something. Right. And I think a lot of people are missing that. Yeah. That kind of that piece. Not that I, I like likened you to an OnlyFans model. Yeah. How I mean dare to do you? That by I'm offended by and that. I'm going to tweet about this later. <laughs> You're going to react? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, but like, what is that in, in your, uh, your life and your content creation journey? Yeah. How has that changed that, that kind of Oh uh, man. Thought? Well, we were talking a little bit about this before we started uh, filming and uh, cause you asked, how's the YouTube mm -hmm. going? And I'm like, eh? <laughs> yeah, I'm still trying to figure it out because like I'm not I've never really been into political discourse I yeah. got f flown into that because of my red pill moment and me having a lot of things to say about the culture and then once I found Christ it's like a whole nother layer was revealed to me where it's now it's like okay I see the problems in the world but now I recognize what the solution to the problems are the problem with YouTube is most of my audience followed me 
for political commentary. So they hear right. all this God talk. I don't want to hear about this. Right. And they're like, yeah, that's not what I tuned in for. That's and like you get that a lot because YouTube is very like you've got to do the one thing mm -hmm. that only that one thing. And I'm not even saying like the audience is the problem. I mean, they showed up to a channel that had a certain type of content and then sure. that channel's not making that anymore. That's understandable. And they leave. So it's just like finding that audience again. Yeah. It's just also figuring out what I want to do creatively because commentary just isn't it for me. It's not cutting mm -hmm. it. Um, and I think a portion of that reason is because if I see the problems in the world and I know that the gospel is the answer to these problems and then people are just like dismissing it and it's like, okay, then you're not really interested in hearing the solution. I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah. What, what led you to the, I mean, if you, if you don't mind answering, what led you to Christ? Like what got you to that, that point? Yeah. So it was my cancel story actually that, that started the process. I lost everything. I lost my sponsors. I lost my friends. I lost my network. Mm -hmm. I wasn't able to even make a living. And then, um, the director of the Gothics documentary reached out to me, uh, on YouTube. He found one of my videos and he was like, I'd like to make a documentary because I'm a filmmaker. And at first I ignored him because yeah. that's kind of sus. That is a little weird. A little like, weird. I want to hold a <laughs> like, movie, man. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I, I finally accepted his offer. He flew to Rhode Island and uh, during filming, he shared the gospel to me and my husband. And it was like a maybe a year after sneaky that. Sneaky Christians, they do yeah. that all the time. So sneaky, so sneaky. Always but evangelizing. See, see, man. But you know, it was so refreshing about that whole journey was I was encountering someone who I was conditioned to hate based on what I was told mm -hmm. in the media. These Christians are extremists and they're bigoted and I hate you. And, and, yeah. And I'm not going to doubt there's some nasty people out there that call Absolutely. themselves Christians. Hey, like I said, there's <laughs> assholes everywhere. That includes in Christianity. It's yeah. like every, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But you know, it was so different. And I'm like, I can have a conversation with you. I can't have a conversation with 90% of the people <laughs> that are on Twitter right now. Mm -hmm. So that's something. Oh, well, I, I, uh, real quick, I wanted to kind of talk about something that is a uh, near and dear to my heart. You know? Uh oh, you know what that is? What this show? <laughs> 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 uh, like and subscribe, by the way. Uh, the Blaze, man. Uh, the Blaze has been really great to us. Mm -hmm. They, they, uh, they basically said, "Hey, here's a blank check. Make a show, Dave." <laughs> yeah. Angela yeah, right. and Garrett and uh, no, it's, but they, they've never told us not to do something. They've always said, Hey, do whatever it is that you guys want to do. Make the sketches you want to make. I've never gotten a note on anything that we've done uh, aside from ad reads. Uh, because we need to specifically yeah, all the hit dildos things. that we've used, all, <laughs> all of those, the fucks we've said. You know, <laughs> they've never said things to me to not do that. So they're they're really uh, focusing on being uh, true to their word and free speech. And in a place like uh, in a place in time like America, and in this election year, yeah, that's really important. So I would just want to say thank you to the Blaze. And if you want to support us and support all the other great things, because they're making movies it's not just political stuff because they're 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 covering all of that the political side of everything but they're also trying to make new media which is very important because hollywood and every single industry is trash right now and we need more stuff and uh they're they're producing movies and documentary series so go to blaze.com and get a subscription today and you can use code normal get 20 percent off 20 dollars off Oh, it's twenty dollars. That's that's way, probably more. That's like better. Yeah, that's like way better actually. <laughs> I think so. If you say it that way, which is the correct way. And use a promo code normal twenty dollars off today. You do it today. I also just want to say about the Blaze, mm -hmm. um, you guys are awesome. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks, Blaze. That was wholesome. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> well, yeah. and it's also that they they like teach us how to say like they're like say whatever you want say whatever you want on the blaze and they kind of teach you yeah. these little tricks to be able to like do it on youtube mm. oh yeah and so it's they YouTube really speak. give you the platform to like actually go there yeah. you know nice so thanks all the all the dildos yeah they've never said anything to me about it yeah <laughs> there's a lot of them <laughs> how many splurge honestly a lot yeah she Big. had a trunk full of them i once. had a trunk full i have to famously told a story on the show where i had to like I was at a funeral and they tried to put a bunch of flowers in my car uh -huh. to transport them. And mm -hmm. there were like dildos all over yeah. the trunk oh. from shooting. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, a sketch. Shooting a sketch. Shooting a sketch. A sketch. Not shooting the dildos. Oh. That would have been cool. Okay. Well, actually. Target practice. That's an idea. Yeah. It is Texas. We could do that. Yeah. I want to get back on to you, Vanessa. <laughs> all right. What? So your plan is, 
content wise making more documentary stuff or making no there is you, you, to my knowledge there is no gothics part two documentary there's only one okay um what's not next? a follow-up i want to follow up. Uh, i'm right here <laughs> what do you mean <laughs> You can follow me in real time. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I don't I don't know. I don't know. I have just a desire to work creatively on something with a team instead of just being in my little room in a cave like me. <laughs> <laughs> Reaction videos. <laughs> Do you have any ideas like what that might be? I mean, you don't have no, to tell I have us no what they I, are. I like, have no idea. I think it could be a, a, a show or a... I would I would love I would love a show like uh, if if to work on something, even if it's like, you know, I'm going to be the mic guy. I'll be the mic. Guy. I just want to I just want to work on a team, you know, something but, creative. Yeah. yeah. Like I because my my background with streaming, I started on Twitch and I and I did self produce like a live stream with my green screen and special effects. And I was doing all these fun things just by myself with yeah. the help of like some some of my community members before they all threw me under the bus. Um, but it was so creative and different, you know, and I feel like I'm just in this repetitive thing of just like, I can only go so far with the YouTube stuff. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what that looks like, but I'm always open. You, you should come over and do a, a sketch with us. Yeah, I would love mm -hmm. to. You can see what it's like. I was watching one of your sketches with the, uh, the paper towels and the, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. yes. Florentine killed it. Yeah, yeah it's good. <laughs> I love his like very dry, even delivery of every single line. It's perfect. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so hilarious. good. Uh, Vanessa, do you know the the saga of Diddy? Uh, I am I'm a little privy to it. Yes. <laughs> yes, it's been a wild ride. Okay. Uh, apparently, nothing happened. Everything's good now. What? That's what I heard. What? Because he was on the run, and we were all like, "Hey, where's Diddy?" Is he getting arrested? Like, what's to come of all this stuff? But uh, it kind of just whew, went away. Just weird. Well, it hasn't been that long. I mean, they're working what? on it. He's <laughs> one guy. I don't they're know. They're going to find him? It seems like these things always take They time. don't want to find him. Or do you think, this is the rumor, they went into his house to wipe the files? It's possible. Because he had a lot of dirt on the feds. Yeah. Oh. Or, sorry, what? hold on. On the feds? The, the feddies. The feddy boys. Oh. I'm going to get to the get to it mm. his uh his son dropped a diss track on uh the federal government i think that's what it is <laughs> yeah uh we don't have a clip of this track because he will hit us for copyright but we will be doing a dramatic reading Ooh. of this diss track let me his name is king combs yes. which i think is a better name Naturally. than any of diddy's names king combs is much better yeah now uh vanessa would you like to take the first one or the second uh verse uh you i'll take the second okay i will lead this off here we go dramatic reading of the song from king diddy about <laughs> king combs uh oh sorry <laughs> king combs about <laughs> his father diddy's invasion police raid the crib like they think we selling crack but we out here selling tracks <laughs> multi-million dollar plaques okay <clears throat> that was good okay I like that. Yeah, okay. thank you knock these doors down like them fetty boys running both our cribs too bad they ain't know we bought the we bought the next door because that's the one they missed Thank you. That's very good. Thank you. That's very nice. Check the house next door, feds. <laughs> Angela, would you like to take one? Well, yeah. Okay. I sprung that on you. Do you it. did. Uh, I'll do it. I'll do <laughs> no, it. No, I got it. Pop's been hated on by many men, and that's fine. They're going to try to stop these M's, and they going to die trying. M's? I don't know what that means. We need an urban dictionary on that. M's? M's. These M's. Millions? I guess. It's always about the millions. What's the, where's the next one? <laughs> We're gonna die trying. <laughs> Many men get rich or die trying. That's it. That's the that's the end of the that's yeah. the end of the dramatic dramatic that's reading. That's it. I feel I was getting into that. I know. I want I want more that's lyrics. It. Do they are there more lyrics? Uh, no. <laughs> Just that's it. Okay. Well, that was the end of that segment. All right. And I, I feel like we need a dramatic readings. Make one. We should do that. Make one now. Mm. Well, I can't do it now. I'm sitting in the chair. Okay. <laughs> I had a story 
that I mm-hmm. didn't approve with anybody. Oh, shit. An Angela story? <sighs> um, a woman gave herself poop transplants using her brother's feces to treat debilitating IBS. And then she started getting acne just like him. Excuse me. So she didn't have acne before. And then she <laughs> got these poop transplants, which is apparently like a very common thing that's done. So this is not in the, not in the show map. No, I don't I'm remember sorry. That. Did... I just found it. I came across it and I really wanted to share that. I'm confused. Is there more to this story? Is there context? Why does she need a poop transplant? Well, she had debilitate, de- debilitating gut symptoms. Okay. So the, bu- the gut biome. Yeah. She's trying to get. But wh- how, do you, how do you transplant poop? I'm just going to say, What's the... this is literally a South Park episode. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, have you seen it? This? This episode. This is real. Oh, this episode. No, no. I mean, I, I thought that they were making a mockery, but I'm, my mind is blown that people <laughs> actually do so this. Apparently, it's a treatment called fecal microbiota or a transplant where a healthy donor's feces is introduced into oh. a patient's gut to repopulate it with good microbes. Okay. So she used her brother's and she ended up also getting depression like him as well. What? What? <laughs> no. Well, that's just because of what she went through. Well, I just want to know how this conversation came about. Like, hey, bro, can I borrow your doo-doo? Like, uh, how does that work? <laughs> do you got to go to the doctor? Is there like a kit? You can do it at home by yourself. I or have like questions. Enema. Yeah. Um, like, okay, it does say a man in his mid thirties with Crohn's disease did DIY poop transplants using his mom as a donor for years. Oh my god! Like, was there I'm an assi- was there assistance or was he just doing this just off the internet? He read an article and was like, they appeared to ease his gut symptoms, but he experienced menopause symptoms such as sweating, hot what? flashes, and mood swings, similar to his menopausal mom. How does that? What What is in poop? What is in? <laughs> That can transfer like acne, depression, and menopause. We really should ask Dr. Steve, well, honestly. I, we should. I, I, this is one thing I want him to be like on top I'm gonna of. I'm going to send him this clip. Please. He's gotta, you, help us, Dr. What Steve. What the please. hell? I mean, if you transplant someone else's poop into you, I can understand why you have depression. Because you probably paid for that procedure. <laughs> and and that that is depressing. Okay, there's three ways this could go. The procedure. Okay. Right. Going through the top end. Stop. Not gonna happen. Stop. Like, like, you can't do that. That's not healthy. <laughs> Going through the bottom end, you got to get way up in there. Yeah. To, like get on the other side of your poo. No. Yeah. And like replace your poo with their poo. <laughs> okay. Right. Or you're like C-sectioning, and you're like, you know, you know or what I'm saying? You put it yeah. in a pill. What? You put <laughs> it in a pill cap. That's what it says they do. No. What? <laughs> it really <laughs> does go down the front. Yeah, but in a pill capsule, not just like straight up poop, I'm sure, but like a, a sample of it. No. A small. No. So some dude, okay, so some dude was in his house going, yo, mom, I got some gut issues. My gut's not <laughs> feeling good. Could you poop in this cup? And I'm going to scoop it out and put it in to little capsules myself and ingest them. And it worked. He said that, it, well, aside from him starting to have menopause, <laughs> that's a side effect. His gut stuff got better. So at least and you can't have babies, but not, no. yeah, it's not bad. I just find it hard to believe that any parent would agree to that. That's, that's a, that is a close. Yeah, family. one of your kids, Gary, one of your kids comes up and is like, <laughs> Dad, can I have your poop? <laughs> that sucks. That sucks for you, man. You don't want none of this. Uh, How is that a thing, man? I don't know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Vanessa. We've done I'm sorry this to bring you. That to it's, it's, it's all right. Toilet humor always gets me. So, it's a. I don't know where to go after that. I'm very confused. We should have a segment in the show. Again, I think we've just like developed more segments. Yeah. Angela's stories. Mm-hmm. I like that. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Vanessa. Yeah. Where can people find you? What are you doing? Other than all the things we just talked about. I mean, we kind of went over it, but where? Yeah, you, find you can right find me on the YouTubes, Gothics TV. Um, sometimes I stream on Twitch, not too often. But yeah, you can watch my documentary on Laura TV and uh, keep an eye out for it to be on Amazon Prime. Hopefully soon, whenever they approve it. Maybe they won't. I don't know. Who knows? Hey, and uh, you can follow me on my channel, Quarter Black Garrett. And uh, you can go see Dave's shows. DaveLando.com. Get all the tour dates. He'll be here next week. And I've got an end of the world. What? Hit it. (laughs) Hit it. (laughs) 
Uh, All right, it's not the cough related? one. Yes, of course it is. Okay. If you had to choose one donor, who would it be? I got to know their quality of life. Yeah. Right? Not Dave. <laughs> I would, uh, yeah, that's why. Just, I, you know. Uh, that's a hard question. All right, I'm sorry. You know, like, jumping all on me. Uh, Angela. That's a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> that's wrong. <laughs> I'm going to say Bill Cosby. What? That's just what I'm going to say. We're talking about poop, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, a donor. What, what, what kind of side effects do you life. think you get out of that? Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know. What are you looking at me for? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, what? I don't know who would, who would you choose i don't I, man i don't know that's just because whoever i say will reveal way too much about me uh, so you got to get the benef benefits but you also get a negative a negative um i don't know man i don't know i'm gonna have to think on this mm, <laughs> okay. it's too long. you, you can't think about this it. is sus <laughs> i'm gonna go with michael jackson because he has good moves he's dead well, you can get back that You don't know what archaeology does. <laughs> they can get his gut biome and give it to me. Please. You know somebody's got it in a jar somewhere. That's Probably. Mm -hmm. For sure. You Last chance. <laughs> uh, I don't know. Kanye? <laughs> All right. What yeah, you the, the symptoms. What's the side effect on that? <laughs> um, this just creativity yeah <laughs> let's call it that too much creativity well hey uh we're gonna see you tomorrow thank you for vanessa, vanessa for coming on and uh i'm sorry i apologize and we'll see you uh, later <laughs> oh my god just run though